Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Arch Linux the easy way. Now, this is not the easiest way. If you want to go the easiest way, you'd choose something like Endeavor OS or Manjaro or my personal favorite, Arco Linux, and then install it with a graphical installer. All those, I believe, use the Calamari's installer, and they're very easy. They take 10-15 minutes. You're always left with something that's a derivative of Arch. If you do a Neo fetch on Manjaro, it's going to say you're running Manjaro Linux. Same thing with Arco or Endeavor. With the way I'm showing you today, you're actually installing Arch Linux. And if you do a Neo fetch in this, you'll get it'll actually say Arch Linux. So you can say, I use Arch Linux, by the way. So there is one caveat that I will say right up front. If you're installing this on a laptop that does not have an Ethernet jack, I can't help you with it. I have no clue how to get connected to the internet on Arch Linux with a, with Wi-Fi. I just don't know how to do it. I've never been successful. The one place the Arch Wiki completely falls down, in my opinion, is network connectivity. It's just, I mean, it's a, a convoluted mess. And you can you can Google, you know tutorials on how to do it and I still have never been able to figure it out so if you're going to do this make sure you're hooked up to a computer with wife or with an ethernet port that's just the way it, or be smarter than I am which is probably not that hard uh, and you know be able to connect via wi-fi so I'm going to actually be doing this in a virtual machine today and it should be fairly easy it's just going to be using a script so let's go ahead and jump over to virtual box here and we'll hit start and we'll see if we can make this full screen okay we'll see if this actually is going to work I will put a link to what I'm going to be doing uh, in the video description so that you can follow along and copy and paste things as you need to and I'm also going to try to make this text bigger and I was at least a little successful on that. So if if you need to make your font bigger to actually be able to see it, you can run this command here: set font ISO 01-12x22.psfu.gz. I just googled that and it was in Reddit somewhere, so I'm assuming that it's perfectly fine to run it when it worked. So now the next thing what we we want to do here is we need to set our key. Our keyboard so we want to do load key okay and then US okay now if that's if you're using the US if you're using uh, like the you want to use the like a Spanish one you do ES if you want to use UK I believe you just use UK but I'm gonna use the US one yeah it should be load keys yeah, I'm sorry, load keys, not load key. Okay, and that's going to have no output at all unless you've made a mistake like I did. Uh, just make sure you actually type things correctly. Like I said, the instructions for all of this stuff will be in the video description. It'll be very easy. There's also instructions there on how to connect via Wi-Fi. I'm still not sure how to do it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. So what we're going to do next is um, we need to download the script we're going to be using. So we're going to be typing curl dash s cap oop, small s capital l and then https colon backslash black back i can't say backslash back sat <laughs> backslash backslash there we go <laughs> that's lost it <laughs> and then bitly bit dot l y there is a longer url that you could type in if you wanted to uh, it's the exact same thing. This is just easier. And we want to do slash 2F3. Actually, make sure I type this right. 2F3. C-A-T. P. And then pipe bash. And that will download something here for just a second. This is the script that we're going to be using. So the next thing we're going to want to do is them into alis.conf. Okay, so this is the Arch Linux installer configuration file. And 
it's go going to have a ton of stuff that you're going to have to change. So down here where it says keys, we want to want to change this to US. Change word US. Okay. We can leave log as false. Okay. And then we'll just scroll down here. Now, here's where this is going to be a little bit different. So the next thing you want to do is tell Arch Linux where you want it to be installed. I'm not actually sure what the partition is or the drive name is on VirtualBox. So I'm going to have to go to a different, um, mm, I'm actually have to quit out of this and do this real quick. I have to go back and find out. So I'm just going to quit out of this and do lsblk and we need to make sure that we're on the right one and it's sr0 is what we're looking at actually it's sda sda is the right one okay so we'll just go back up to the one we were just in and we need to go up here and make sure we change this back because we didn't save change word us get back out of insert mode so you don't make any mistakes and then a lot of these ones here, you're going to have multiple options. The exclamation, ex, exclamation point, I'm having the hardest time with words and punctuation. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, you can either just leave these or you can delete them. I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Okay. And then I deleted the wrong one. Okay. And then you, the rest of this stuff here is basically, you just leave it the same. Uh, you want you can choose the file system type. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as ext4 because it works best in VirtualBox. Um, on my system, I chose ButterFS when I tried this out, and it worked just fine. Uh, same thing with the next thing you want to do is choose your swap size. You can leave this all. You can leave this exact just the way it is, and you won't end up having a swap at all. I'm going to go ahead and use the 2048. So just delete the exclamation point and then delete the rest. Okay, partition size, you want to leave this as auto. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these other ones. You don't have to delete these. They should, it should work if you don't delete them. I'm just doing it because um, you know, a little bit, you know, retentive about stuff. Uh, the rest of the stuff here, we can just leave the way it is. Okay, we can scroll down now. Um, this network install thing here is if you had, had Wi-Fi. Again... I don't know how that works, so if you have Wi-Fi, you're just going to have to read the directions here and hope hope for the best. Um, so we're going to scroll down here. We want to we want to change this reflector thing part here to true. Oops. And basically, what this is going to do is use the reflector software to choose the best mirrors for you. Okay, um, and then you can just change this one here to your country. United States okay and the next one you want to change here is choose the kernel that you want to use so I'm going to use the LTS kernel so we'll delete this part and we'll delete the headers okay and the next thing here this is going to be one that you want to change I believe and I, I want you, I've always been changing it to this gzip here and then deleting the rest of these because um, I know gzip works. Um, now Arch Linux just did change to something else by default. I'm pretty sure they changed to gzip by default, but uh, I might be misremembering that. So the next thing we want to want to do is choose the driver that we want to install for our graphics. And this one here is interesting because I'm not actually sure which one to choose for VirtualBox. Obviously, we don't need NVIDIA. And I believe what we want to do, to do is just do all this blank, because I think it'll be perfectly fine for, for VirtualBox. It, for you, depending on what graphics card you have in your computer, you'll either want the Intel one, the AMD GPU, or the, one of the NVIDIA ones. Again, that's going to be something that's going to depend on what card you have in your computer. The rest of the stuff here, I believe we leave exactly the same, which we do. Okay, so keep keep scrolling. Now here's where, where some of the this is where you're gonna be changing your languages. 
So and you're and setting your time zone. So I know I'm I'm in, gonna change this word here to America and change this word here to Detroit. Okay, and then I'm going to delete this first one here in locales because I don't need this uh, span. Uh, I don't I don't need Spanish. And I just need US dash UTF eight. Okay. And then the same thing here, I'm going to delete the languages of of Spanish. And just use the English one. Okay. And same thing with the key map, we need to change this to US. Okay, and the key map layout to US, okay? And then you change the name of your computer by this host name here. And I'm just going to leave it as Arch Linux, but you can change it to whatever you want. And then you can put your password here. Now, if you leave it ask, I believe it will ask you to set it up once you've you know rebooted. But I'm just going to type in the password and TLC for, you know, just this is not the password I would normally use, obviously. But it works. Okay. Now you want to create a user. So I'm going to create my user, Dr. MDub. Oops. And TLC. All right. And you can actually create other users by doing, you know, following these directions here. Okay. And then. This part here stays all the same. Scrolling down, this part here stays the same, unless you, there's something you know for sure you need to change. All right, and here's the here's an important part. The bootloader, you want to change this to Grub, because by default, they have it as Systemd. I tried that because it's, you know, the, what they have it as default, but it did not work. So you need to uncomment Grub and delete the other ones. Okay, and then here you can choose your, your default shell. So I'm just gonna leave that as bash. And, all right, and here's where you're gonna wanna choose the desktop environment you have that you, you'll have upon reboot. Now you can leave these all commented and that means you could go through and install your own. Afterwards, you'd be prevented, presented with a TTY after reboot. I'm just gonna go ahead and uncomment XFCE. Okay, that way I should have an XFCE desktop on reboot. Uh, this package is to install, leave that blank and install your packages afterwards. Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to need that vagrant part. I'm not actually sure. We're going to see if this works. And we want reboot to be set to true. Okay, so that's it. Now, oh, what we do we need to do is colon, write, quit, colon, WQ, and the next thing we're going to want to do is actually run that. So do dot slash a i a l i s dot s h, and we'll see if this works. So it's going to ask you if you want if sure you want to partition your drives. Hit yes, and we'll see if this works. It's going to go through again. You're not if you weren't successful in co connecting to the internet. So if you're not connected via uh, uh, Ethernet cable. This would not work because this is an, a net installer, which means you have to be connected to the internet. It's downloading stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I've never been, once been successful in getting connected to the Wi Fi with Arch Linux. That's a me problem for sure. I'm just too stupid to figure out how to do it. Um, I'm sure, like I said, there's probably tutorials out there that could probably help me to do so. I've just not been interested in doing it. And I will cut away after. This is done and come back. That way you don't have to sit here through this whole process. Okay, once you get to this point here, it's going to try to reboot. It may or may not be successful. We'll see if it is. It did not abort, it did not reboot on its own. 
it just you know so, sometimes it fails and i'm actually okay with that because i actually would like to do a uh, shutdown so i can remove because you don't want to make sure you remove the installation media and i'm going to have to do that in VirtualBox. so i'm just going to sudo shut down now okay and then i will go through and remove the installation media Now I'm going to just restart up and we should be loading into Arch Linux here if everything went right. And it did. Look at this. TLC. All right. And we should be able to going into and we are in Arch Linux. So if we open up a terminal here and zoom in sudo pacman dash capital S neo fetch yes clear neo fetch arch linux bada bam bada boom do these people still say that bada bam but <laughs> I don't think they still say that I'm a child of the 90s what can you say anyway <laughs> um, that's how you install arch linux the easy way it was really simple you just go through that configuration file uh, fill out some things. Make sure you change that last one from system D to grub and you won't have any problems. Now, if you're on certain systems, this uses LightDM as the login manager. I had problems with LightDM and had to switch to SDDM. And that's not a problem with this script specifically. It's a problem with Arch Linux and, S and LightDM. It's really weird because it happens on across distributions because it happened in Arco. It also happened in Manjaro. So if you end up rebooting and going to like a black screen change to sddm you'll be happier and it will work so that's arch linux i mean literally it was that simple now like i said i apologize for the lack of wi-fi information maybe someday i'll get that figured out and make a video about it i just can't get my can't wrap my hand head around it there's terminology there that i don't understand just can't get through my little mind anyways uh, let's jump into social, shall we? Make sure you follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash linuxcast, facebook.com slash linuxcast. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Starting in mid-March, everyone who is a tier 2 or tier 3 patron will get early access to all of our videos. They already get access to our podcasts a day early. Uh, they also get access to blog posts and r various ramblings that I post on there every once in a while. They get a chance to vote in polls to choose what topics we cover on the blog or on the co on the channel uh, from time to time. So, if you are interested in supporting the channel, you can do so by either subscribing or by uh, going to Patreon.com/LinuxCast. And speaking of patrons, thank you to Devon C and Marcus B for being our patrons. We really do appreciate it. Thanks everybody for watching. And uh, leave me in the comments below if you have problems. Let me know, and I will help walk you through them. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.